Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 21 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today we're going to work on finishing a project that I have worked on on several past episodes. And each week I do go live at 2 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> So let's see if any of you can hear me. It feels like there's an extremely long delay today. So if you can hear me, go ahead and hit the thumbs up so that I know that it's just something on my end. It says I'm streaming. So hello, Tina from Casa Grande and Tina from Texas and hi, Amy from Phoenix. Why am I not hearing anything? I see you all coming online. Okay, so it finally kicked in. Wow, that's the longest it's ever delayed. I'm shocked. <laughs> so, got a little nervous. Thought it wasn't set up right despite... <laughs> but we have had internet issues this week. Someone cut a fiber optics line in Phoenix. Hi, Iris. So... <laughs> Yeah, everything's okay. So I thought that I would try, because I've never done this before, so it would be something that I would do with you guys for the first time. Hello, Chase. Chase has to say hi before I start, apparently. Hello, Bobby. Everything's fine, okay? All right. I already gave you a cookie. Now you go, okay? <laughs> Go on, shoot. No whining. Go on. <laughs> All right. So I feel like this has been on my sewing table for quite a while. And I hope you're not tired of seeing it. I'm actually thrilled with it and did not have time to do the finishing touches on it before my father's birthday last Saturday. And uh, so I, I figure I should just have you guys be a part of the completion of it. And I still have some pebbles to quilt. However, I do not have to finish the quilting before I do the binding. Did you know that? We could actually bind first and quilt second with the octi hoops because there's no chance of getting a pucker because we don't use a foot. So you can actually bind your whole quilt first, then go in and do your quilting afterward. And uh, that's actually how we used to do quilt binding. We used to take the back of the quilt and wrap it to the front. And we did that binding first and then we quilted, but mostly by hand and a lot of tying off. Not so much free motion. I wanted something else to be on, excuse me. Come on. Why aren't you playing? been a strange week for me with electronic devices <laughs> that should be on because it's on over there so interesting 
So would you guys like me to start with a little bit of free motion or do you want me just to go into the binding and then do the free motion all by myself? It wasn't you. All right. So I prepared my binding before because I'm trying to be more ready each time I go live. And to do the faux piping binding, you are basically making the color of the piping bigger in or wider than the strip that you use for the majority of the piping that's going to show. And since I used, I'm trying to use the same colors I used in the Dresden plate to be used for my binding. I did spray starch my fabric several times. And if you don't know how to measure your binding, You basically will measure across your actual piece that you're going to bind and you come you add that number and then you times it by two and then you measure this way and times it by two and then I like to have an extra nine inches added for joining the bindings after we're done. Sorry. I want this to be on. So that if there is any trouble, I can see it. It's so weird how it just won't play. It's as if something changed this week. I guess I'm just not going to be able to do it. Oh, well, I have no idea what's going on with this device. We'll just let it take a nap and not work today. Okay. So in this case, I have uh, 20 by 18 for a total of 86 inches in binding length, overall length. And since our fabric is not 86 inches wide, we're gonna have to my, or piece our fabrics together. It wasn't you that cut the fiber optics better days. <laughs> Boy, it's been a lot of whining in Arizona <laughs> because of that incident. So since I've already started getting my binding fabrics ready, I'm just going to continue with that. And if, if you guys want me to finish the stippling or the free motion quilting first, give me a flower. So you look down in the comment area and you'll see that they have a face and then they have a flower. And when in the flowers, any flower will tell me that you guys want me to go ahead and finish the free motion quilting and then the binding, which is probably how you guys would proceed. So for the wider or for the piping fabric, I'm going to cut that at one and three quarter inches. And of course this is always made easier with the cutter pillar light tablet being able to look close up shot here a little too close I think so basically I'm folding my fabric because I am limited on space so I have my normal fold of fabric and then I fold that in half and you could even fold it in half again but if you're not really accurate on how you folded it, then you might not end up with a perfectly straight binding. So I usually will only fold it one time over the traditional fold that 
the fabric company created and then make sure that fold is on that line and then that that is on that line as well and each of these is a half inch so inch and three quarters each one of these lines in with the dotted line is a three quarter or a quarter inch section I stand up and look down through my ruler to make sure that I am in perspective. So if you sit and you look toward your ruler instead of down through your ruler, that is when a lot of people make errors in cutting. One half and a quarter. I can't wait to have this on my kitchen table. And I, I was going to actually take off this week. And then I went, you know what? My show helps me actually make things for me. So it's not really like work for me. It's more like goofing off. I goof off with you every week. So thank you for helping me have take the time for myself to create pretty things for my house. None of you are giving me flowers, so you just want me to get straight to the binding. That's what I'm taking. Of course, I did advertise that this is also free motion quilting. So if you're lurking in the background and you wanted to see free motion, then you need to get into the chat and make your presence known. That should be more than enough. Hi, Sandy. Oh my goodness. I'm going to mute this and take this call because someone hit my car and hit and ran and that's what this is regarding. So one second, you guys. Okay. I said, I'm actually live on YouTube right now. Can I call you back? That's probably not something they hear every day. All right. So none of you, none of you want me to bind or quilt first. So I am going to go ahead and do the, the binding. And I was, I'm thinking about adding a twist to it. So we'll see if I can do it. So one of the things that you need to realize is, is when you buy fabric, it's always right side out when the fold. Well, not always, but generally with cottons and quilting fabric, it is right side out with the fold. So I like to keep pay attention to that fold and never flatten that out so that I can always tell with a batik without, you know, any question that I have right side up. And with right side facing down, no, facing up, we're going to go ahead and take our next strip. And then we cross the bindings. So if they're facing one another, right sides together. And the board really helps with this to know that you are 
straight with the piece beneath it. And then you can draw a line from side to side. But I, before I do that, I like to secure the fabric using our liquid base glue. And you can just put a dot in the corner if you like. I lost my lid last week. So if you lose your lid, you just use a pin to open it. And then I do a dot in the corners on those two ends. And you can see through this, you know that this is where that one will overlap. And then just kind of lightly tap it to spread out the liquid. And then take your right sides and bring them together. You have time to position them so that it's absolutely accurate. And then you can draw a line, which I prefer to do because I know that if you don't sew this line perfectly straight, that you don't end up with a straight edge on the inside of your binding. And then I'll just let that dry while bringing the other end. So two strips is about 40 inches. I know you watched it last week. I will end with free motion quilting and show you that you definitely can free motion quilt after your binding is already attached. So a dot, and a dot, and a dot. I was hoping to have this all done so that you didn't have to wait for me to fiddle around with it. Right side up. You guys get whatever you want because you're my regulars. You guys show up. Do any of you have plans for Memorial Day weekend? So I was starting to feel like taking a day off or a week off from the show so that I can do some of the some other things that I have going on and I was thinking about next week being Labor Day week that I will be taking it off so there will not be a show next Thursday as I will take a little mini staycation kind of vacation. If I change my mind and I go live if you're on following me in any way then you'll know because I'll let you know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful Memorial Day week. There we go. There we go. My dad's party was sweet. It was very sweet. My family was tired. My sister just moved recently and they they're renovating their house so everybody enjoyed having me serve them and i enjoy serving people so this one i did wrong and i have time to pull it apart Okay, 
Okay, now time to draw the rest of the lines. I'm sure I made way too much binding, but you can always have a little binding laying around, can't you? I made barbecue ribs and salmon. And my sister made a delicious jicama salad. I made chips, or I made salsa and guacamole as well. Which I'm, I'm known for my salsa, so I've always been the salsa maker. It's probably going to be a little challenging for me to do the quilting after the binding because you have to go all the way to the edge. So you'll just have to see how I adapt. Okay, all my lines are drawn on this. And I'm just going to just kind of, kind of lightly set this aside where if it was a quilt, I would roll it up, but I would still set it aside to make sure that the glue is fully dry and so that it won't come apart when I am winding up my binding. My yard is absolutely beautiful right now. All of the flowers are blooming and I have birds every day bathing. And this morning, I got a little concerned because I, I thought that a pigeon no it's not a pigeon it's a dove I, I thought this dove was injured but what she had done or he took a bath and got probably a little bit wetter than they planned or she or he planned and there were he was laying down on my flagstone in the sun with its wing out and I I guess it was just having a little spa day she bathed and then she was having a little tan I did make carrot cake. I made a gluten-free carrot cake with peach in it as well. And I used coconut cream. And instead of just doing cream cheese, I put half cream cheese and half the actual cream part of the coconut cream. And there is a difference between coconut cream and coconut milk, if you're not aware of that. I make ice cream as well out of coconut cream and I made blueberry chocolate coconut cream ice cream for everyone as well so everything was made from scratch and everyone was plump and full but I didn't use any sugar added sugar in anything I use a um, sugar-free, trying to think of what it's called. I use a sugar-free product that is all natural and doesn't spike insulin. And I still have some of that carrot cake. I was thinking about freezing it, but I don't know if it, how, how well it will defrost. Right side up. I'm trying to think of, did I make anything else that day? The dogs have been in bone heaven. And I made way too, mon way too many ribs. So today's definitely a chatting about not sewing. Let's see. Our inks came in last Saturday. We will be adding them to the site as soon as my son is finished moving into his brand new home in Seattle. Flipping it over because always right side up to right side down. Paying attention. My daughter's building a home right now and my son is moving.
I'm still just in love with this fabric color. So what are you guys making for Memorial Day? I'm probably going to go to, oh, I'm actually part of a walking group too. I joined in my area. So I'm uh, gonna start hiking and I'm going slow about it because I injured my knee when I broke my shoulder several years ago. So I got people going and I call, I'm calling it a stroll instead of a hike. <laughs> and as we get stronger, then we can start hiking. And uh, I got some walking poles coming to help me walk so that I don't put strain on my knees. Have any of you got walking sticks for walking? I think I have pictures of the carrot cake. You know, I didn't take any pictures of anything. My daughter's all, so where's the spread picture? <laughs> like, I was cooking it. And I'm usually the picture taker at our family events. So without me to take the pictures because I was cooking, there is pretty much no historical proof of the party. You fr you frozen carrot cake with the frosting? Okay. So this is now set and waiting to dry. And the other binding is for sure dry. So I'm going to move it over and bring it back out. And what's different about faux piping binding is that this is one half of it and this is the other half of it. So I need to sew these together and hopefully they won't come apart. So I'm looking for the fold So I know this is right side because it's ironed or glued to that one. So this is my end, right side, lay it down. This is the other one. And it's glued together, which means this is right side. And now I'm going to bring these two together. And so a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down the strip. To set up for a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to use the satin edge foot. You can use any foot that you like for a quarter inch seam allowance. This is one of my products. A foot I invented for a blind sewer to help you sew accurately on seam allowances and other other techniques, over 27 techniques for that one foot. This is the snap-on adapter that comes with my sewing machine, and I'm currently using a baby lock crescendo. If you can't tell what it is because it's painted, that's that's this particular model. And I do have more sewing machines, lots of sewing machines. I, I really don't know all how many I have. That's pretty it's a pretty bad problem to have, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm now going to to tighten that adapter fully so that it doesn't wobble. And this is how you set up the foot for a quarter inch seam allowance. You use a measuring tape, place the, the foot itself has this little nut and inside the zigzag opening, this wire that you see going through the opening, when you turn it, turn the nut on it, it moves that wire. 
So we're going to place the foot on the sewing machine. And when you raise the foot, it is going to tip and lean back because it has to carry the weight of that screw assembly. And then when you place it down, it is then stable as you sew. I'm going to select a left needle position. So my needle is going to go over to the left and lower the needle on the line of the measuring tape. Then I turn the nut on the foot and move the wire over to the quarter inch distance. Needle goes on one line, the wire goes on the other quarter inch mark. When you lower the needle, you're not actually placing the needle in the measuring tape, just bringing it down as a reference and have it hover over that line. Then you turn the nut and watching in, this, in the opening to move that to the quarter inch mark. And there are close up videos of this with a better angle. It's harder when I'm live. Let's see if I can tip it so you can see better. That's as good as I can do live. So now I know I have a quarter inch seam allowance and I will maintain that seam allowance the entire time I'm sewing all the binding strips together. I'm using the Invisifil 100 weight polyester thread. As it is thinner than like a 40 weight polyester. And the stitch is less is not going to show as much on our miters and it also won't show as much along the seam allowance in case you get a little sloppy. It is not invisible, it is invisifill. Trying to see if I have another spool. Here we go. And that is the name of this particular thread, the Invisifil from Wonderfill. And it's a dreamy thread. And hopefully now all of that glue is dry. It doesn't take very long as it is just water soluble stabilizer that's wet. And once it dries, I think it'll be more fun for you to see me sew the colored side up because then you can see it staggered. But this is basically what we're doing is going to sew those together. Got a lot of sewing here. Grab the other end. Okay, so this is right side of the other end. And I think I really should open all those miters up first. At least use the presser. So everywhere there's a join and, uh, oh, I have to sew the joins first. Jeez. Okay, time to wake up. I was a little sleepy. Another way of handling this rather than drawing a line is to press and bring that point to there like that. So if you don't have a pen to write on it and then you can just go like that and create a crease and then you sew in the crease. And I'll just leave it set up for a quarter inch seam allowance right now. Lower the needle so that it is in that crease and or at that point. Nope. Going back to a straight stitch or center needle position. The reason is that the wire on the foot helps you to know where you're going. So we bring the wire to the needle and now it's going to help us stitch in that crease or stitch in a ditch. 
Then you bring your needle down into the crease and then you move the nut, turn the nut moving the wire until it touches the right side of the needle. And once you're in that position, you don't have to watch the sewing machine needle and try to sew the needle on the line. Instead, you watch the white part of the guide, keeping the white part of the guide on the line. And I know you can't really see the line. And I didn't, but should have, lowered my stitch length. Or if you have a sewing machine that does stitches per inch, increase the number of stitches that it sews from one side to the other on the diagonal. It'll show up less. And then when you open this up, it gives you a less visible seam allowance, which is what you'd call a miter. Now, a lot of people cut their crease seam allowances down to a quarter inch seam allowance. I prefer to leave it open or leave it as wide as it is and open it. And even though I glued it, and this is why you don't glue all the way along the edge, but do dots instead so you can grab and then pull it apart. And then you press that open. As the foot approaches a straight edge like this, it doesn't pull on it like it does when you have it cut to a quarter inch because the bias is what you're sewing over if you cut that down to a quarter inch, but this is the straight, so it, it handles it better. And then you can also put a little dot on the corners to hold that down so that it doesn't move at all as you approach when you're doing your seam allowances. So I have to do that on each one. And I am going to draw my lines because it's a lot easier. Mount Lemon, how fun. After 30 years of traveling to shows, I'm happy to be home. Best vacation for me is my backyard. <laughs> I think my walking poles are supposed to arrive today. Okay, so let's see here. What is on your sewing table? Share with me. I'd like to know what you guys are doing. There we go. That one's already marked. Let's see how fast I can sew these miters. Shortening my stitch length as I should have before to a 1.8. 
And I usually start on my fabric, sew a couple stitches and then and then reverse. And do the same thing on the reverse. Go off, then go back on and end on. And it's a stronger seam when you do that. I always check as well before moving on to the next miter. Just in case you got distracted. This is already stitched and glued, so that's the one I did first. Coming down to the next one. Now here's where I drew the line on the opposite side. And it doesn't matter because it is the correct way, no matter which side you draw it. Starting on the fabric. So a couple of stitches and go back. Chase is snoring. The, the life of a dog. do I have? Can't remember. Oh, went the wrong way. Or did I finish it? One miter. Two miters. Three, didn't do three yet. I had my glasses. And and I did put my glasses in the glasses holder that Sandy got me. There we go. There we go. Stay on the line and you're good to go. Okay, so all those are done. I'm gonna sew all my miters and then I will press them all. Hi, Marlene. So when I'm sewing with the satin edge foot, I'm always pushing toward the foot from left to from left to right. Gentle push toward the foot and then it pushes back the other way and keeps you sewing. So if you don't have your finger to the side of the foot, it will want to go off on the side. A lot of a lot of you think I, I don't hold on because you don't have to when doing like the satin stitch on the edge, but I do gently push toward the foot. I just don't over handle it. So you'll see my fingers are always right here to the side of the foot, not in back and in front. In fact, 
If your hand is in back and then the other one's in front, it will bounce off the foot. Kind of like the game Pong, that first video game that came out, Atari, a long time ago in another life. So if you played Pong, you had these paddles that would go up and down. And every once in a while, the ball would just start bouncing from side to side, and it would... The, the paddles would go up and down like this, and, and if you went like that, the ball would go up, right? And, and every now and then, the ball would just go straight across, and you could turn the TV off and come, come wake up the next day, and the ball was still just going left and right. And that is because it was perfectly in line, and that is what we're aiming for. Push toward the foot, it pushes back the other way. And then everything in the middle keeps sewing straight. Does that make sense? Cool, cool. How many do I have left? This should not be that hard. <laughs> okay, so how many of you played Atari? You need to hem jeans? Have a pack of needles handy whenever you go to him jeans. I wish I could just film everything you guys need instantly. <laughs> so I did do a video on jeans inside of the VIP group several weeks back. And those videos are, are in the VIP group. You always have access to them. So if you're a member, because I can't remember, your name is not your name. In other words, you're in here as recreations, and I have no idea what your name is. If you're one of the VIP members, that's what you want to do. But you could call me too, you know. I, sometimes I talk to people on the phone and help them through things. So I can give you advice if you're in a pinch and need it before our jeans thread arrives and I start and I teach you guys hem, my hemming technique. Hi, Marsha from Stormy. It's storming, huh? In Oklahoma. Well, hopefully there's no tornadoes. So a few stitches forward, a few stitches back. Watching the white guide, keeping it on the line. And then the needle is on the line. So you're like me, Amy. Did you get addicted to it? I remember dreaming of the pong ball bouncing left and right. All right, it's all sewn together. Now we open all our seams. One time I was going through Texas and I got chased by a tornado. I think that was Highway 25. It's an endless highway forever and ever and ever. <laughs> and I was listening to the radio and my windshield wipers blew off my van. <laughs> that was interesting. And when that happened, and I heard the news saying that it was actually following us. It was going up the highway we were on. I pulled over and found a brick motel, and I and I thought about the um, the three bears and the wolf, and I huffed and I puffed and I they couldn't blow the house down, 
because it was made out of brick and uh, we survived that night. There we go, just the little corners. Next one. And you can press with an iron as well. I prefer to use my presser first. It gives me a crisper seam or a crisper press. This is the Tequila Sunrise presser that you'll find at creativefeet.com if you don't already know about our pressers. I didn't release all the glue. There we go. Hi, Shirley from Alberta, Canada. Welcome. So what I'm doing is I have mitered my, and you can replay these live videos afterward. I've mitered my corners by overlapping them right sides together in a, like a L shape. And I use my liquid base glue to hold it in place so nothing shifts. And then I drew a line and used the satin edge foot to guide over the line. There's the line. And it sews right on that line. And then after you sew, you, you can open up the fabric because we only glue in the points and it is not really a glue it's just water soluble stabilizer that's wet so it comes apart easily after you're done having it hold it that way and I used a short stitch length of a 1.8 so when you open that seam up it's it's the stitches are really really tight together and that makes it less visible on the right side. And then I do not cut this down to a quarter inch seam allowance because your sewing machine behaves better if you don't. And then just do a dot on the corners again. I also spray starch my fabric, spray, sta spray starch both sides twice, spray iron, spray iron, and it gives the fabric body, and it also kind of locks the bias a bit, making it less likely to stretch or become disfigured when you're sewing. Okay. However, you can put a garment together and actually try it on before you sew it with this glue. I actually closed up the gaps in my button hole between my buttonholes on a blouse when I traveled as uh, it was a ready-made shirt I bought and the buttonholes were sewn too large and the buttons kept coming open. So I glued the whole front of the shirt closed and it stayed closed. Of course, I left room for my top button, and then I glued the back side of that button when it was on, and it stayed together the whole day while I was doing a show. What else have I used this for? I've used it to put buttons down before sewing them onto a garment so they don't move. I also have a video on sewing buttonholes, and I mean on sewing buttons on in my YouTube channel. Any of you have any questions while I'm doing this? Because I can read the chat real easy while doing this kind of work. The Tequila Sunrise presser matches this fabric. <laughs> Now, it may seem tedious to do all this gluing first, but I can tell you this much. You never have to worry about your binding not being nice and flat and consistent. 
and if you have hand issues where your hands just don't like to hold on like that very much, you'll find that the glue is wonderful to hold long seam allowances together like I'm about to do. And it kind of keeps the fabrics from stretching as well. But I'm not going to make you wait while I glue all of this together. It's the kind of work you can do sitting on your sofa watching a movie. And we do have a cutter pillar light tablet that has a battery and it holds its charge for four hours. So you can sit on your couch with your cutter pillar as well for cutting. If you don't know what the cutter pillar is, it is the light tablet. And this is a cutting mat that you can cut on even though it's on your light tablet as the light tablet is designed to bear the weight of you pushing really hard on it without damaging or cracking the surface of the light tablet. I think this is the last one that should start getting quicker. Come on, open up. I sure wish I had this done before. <laughs> Have any of you flown on a plane yet this year? You guys are so quiet. Is it because I'm being too quiet? Now I just need to bring right sides together and sew down a quarter inch all the way down. So this is right side. And I want this one on top and the larger one on the bottom. I just feel better <laughs> when I do that. There's really no science to it. I just, uh, as, as you're going, you can actually tell that, that this is overlapping a quarter of an inch as you go. Kind of keep your focus. Or you could glue it, as I mentioned. You could glue these, glue it all the way down. So back to setting up the foot for a quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to take your measuring tape and select a left needle position on a straight stitch. And your needle is going to come down on one of the lines on the measuring tape. Then you move the wire on the foot over to the quarter inch mark, quarter inch away. So my needle is hovering over one of the lines. Lower the foot. Now look down inside the opening and turn the nut, moving that wire over to the, the next quarter inch mark. And now I'm set for a quarter inch. I always start on the fabric and I'm going to use a two and a half millimeter stitch length. Now I'm going to go down because you're going to see the seam allowance on the top of the quilt. I'll go to two. I don't need to go all the way down to a 1.8. So a few stitches forward and then go back. So this is so. Uh, one and a half inches wide, and this is one and three quarters inches wide. You don't want to stretch these fabrics as you sew. Plant your finger and sew about four inches, keeping your finger over here 
pushing toward the foot so that it steers for you. So the benefit of using the glue for piecing long strips like this is that you don't have to hold these fabrics together here. And all you do is one finger guiding here and you can go really fast. It takes longer to glue it, but it takes less time to sew it. And I'm organizing in front of me. I'm making sure that they're overlapping nicely and you could clip them every join with our clip it clips that we have or you could pin but if you pin this the pins could stab your stab you in the leg You're back on full lockdown in Australia. Did I say Australia? Yeah. Here we go. So an accordion fold is a good idea for this. This is so long. I'm not that worried about not succeeding at this, having done it so many times. And I generally will gather up my trims or my fabrics together about 12 inches down and then hold that and then just kind of look and make sure it's nice. And then I plant my finger again, four inches away from the needle. One finger pushing toward the foot. Notice my left hand doesn't change position. This is always, well, just about always my position. And you may not have noticed because when you're watching me sew, your, your eye is wandering around looking at everything. But this finger, my arm, my elbow is resting on the table, always resting my body so that I don't lift my elbows and that makes you wobble. And when your elbows are lifted and you wobble, your perspective changes with what you're looking at. If you're watching the needle, you will end up not sewing a straight line. You'll swerve simply because you swerve when you're not anchored to the table, which is anchored to the floor and your house is on the planet. And so you're grounded to the earth and you don't tend to wobble. So elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Very, very light touch as if you're brushing some thread off of a table is the amount of pressure I apply to the fabric. Very, very light touch. The foot is designed to do the guiding for you. So you just have to trust it. And I would say that that's the most challenging thing for anyone is to trust uh, our feet and to not look as much. So as you get more comfortable with it and less pressure when you're pushing down on things it gets easier and more accurate and you feel better zoom zoom make sure you don't lay your belly against those fabrics and stop them from feeding And what we have here is the wire is off the edge of the fabrics. And right now it's my ring finger that's pushing and it is directly across from the foot. And this is because I'm not glued that I'm feeling the need to use my, my left hand in two positions here and there. So keep your raw edges together. Gentle push toward the foot. Easy going, like a summer day. What would you guys like me to teach next? I mean, summer's coming, it gets hot. We like to go outside. 
What would keep you indoors to sew? What would you want to sew bad enough to stay inside on a beautiful summer day? And it's definitely a longer process to do this faux piping. And we have the pearls and piping foot, which shows perfect piping. So why am I doing the faux piping? Because when you turn a corner with real piping, it is challenging even with our foot. And I always thought this looked really cool. And when you go to sew the binding on, it's faster. Am I coming up on my first join? I don't know. It seems like it. You don't have the foot yet, Linda? Well, it definitely makes your sewing easier. But you got to open it and actually put it on the machine. Right now we have free shipping over $49 at Creative Feet. I don't know how that applies internationally. We do have a link that you can click on to see how it applies. I didn't, cr I don't do that part of our website, so. Air conditioning keeps you inside. <laughs> but what would you want to sew to stay inside on a beautiful day? Zoom, zoom. Fingers are pushing toward the foot just very, very ever so lightly. Like if there was an infant in front of you and you just wanted to put your finger on its cheek, you'd be very gentle. Same thing here, so you don't stretch your fabric. We spray starched the fabric and ironed twice to reduce the amount of stretch that you can apply accidentally. What's really cool about the satin edge foot is that you get accuracy. You can sew faster, you don't look at the needle, so your body doesn't get as sore, so you can sew longer, accomplish more. Feel more confident in your sewing because things end up mathematically correct, because the foot is the one that's doing the guiding. I'm relying on it by pushing toward it. And that's how I designed it for a blind sewer. She couldn't see at all. She was born blind, by the way. So she was also born deaf, and so I had her push, and when they feel it buckle, feel the fabric kind of buckle up like that, then they know they're using the foot to guide. And we do have a large following of blind sewers. They, they sew in groups, and they, they actually are using our octahoops as well, which blows my mind, doing free motion completely blind I am not I'm humbled by them and every once in a while I close my eyes while doing free motion quilting just to kind of get an idea and I I get scared <laughs> and I wake up I'm trying to make sure I always teach you something when I go live Gentle touch, elbows down, shoulders relaxed, gentle push. Watching here, making sure that the fabrics don't separate or slip on one another. I'm really not 
worried about watching the guide where you will probably need to do that as you are new to it and not trusting as much. You don't have to watch the needle, which is moving. You watch right here and just make sure the fabric's touching. A wine bag with handles, ooh. Or an iPad bag for children with pockets. Cool, I like these ideas. For how young of children, like little, little itty bitties. Do any of you have an instant pot? My daughter wants me to make stuff for the instant pot. She also talked about bathing suits. You really should teach people how to make bathing suits. Well, hi, Allison. I don't think I said hi to you. You snuck in on me. Well, this is a long piece. It's such a small quilt. I've probably made twice what I really need. But I was thinking I'd make some pot holders or I make pot holders sized little quilts and then I bind them and I use them as place, not placemats, but coasters. So you have a wider landing for your cup or your wine glass or whatever, your coffee cup, than just that little round coaster. And I really do like that. Maybe it has to do with getting older, I don't know. Light touch, pushing toward the foot, gentle, not stretching the fabric. My foot was on the, the binding. <laughs> It wasn't moving. Raw edges together. And that's what made this kind of pull is that my foot was stepping on it. I really think I've made way more than I need. So hopefully that area won't, I don't want to have to rip that out, but probably should have. So I'm thinking next week, we or next time I go live, in case I don't go live next week because I may take it off. Or I may just do like a, a napkin, something really quick. Just to, we'll see. My employees are like, take the time off. Take a break. can't remember your name sewing in trifocals. I'm sewing with magnifying glasses right now. I have to go get my eyes checked because I put on my trifocals the other day and I couldn't, I couldn't see it all. <laughs> so, oops. See, my finger was in front of the foot instead of to the side of the foot. And then I caught myself and my ring finger is what's doing the guiding and it's really not guiding. I kind of been planting it on the machine allowing the fabric to just slide under. So that finger right there, and it keeps you sewing straight. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> I love it when it goes perfectly for a long period of time like that. Allison. 
I'll try to remember that. It took me a while to learn Amy is better days. <laughs> I think you guys are creative when you have different names. I always have to be Claire Rowley. That sounded kind of funny, didn't it? <laughs> of course you have to. So if any of you are wondering, and I said I got a hit and run, I wasn't moving fast. I did not get injured. My friend did not get injured. The car got injured. It's my Mustang, my little get around town car. And it's not a terrible injury to the vehicle, but it does need to be repaired. And they didn't catch the guy. Almost to the end, you guys. Yay. There we go. So I don't want you guys to worry about me. Last little bit. So you see how that hand is stable the entire time. Oh, yeah, you guys are having your winter, aren't you? It's getting hot here. I might, I'm going to trim this down. <laughs> Should have done that before. You're glad I step on my binding. <laughs> you know, the reason I know what to tell you not to do is because I've, I've pretty much made every mistake there is. I really like how this is turning out. <laughs> So to, to make sure that I have enough, I'm just going to lay down once, twice. And this is the longer end, so if I go, again, fourth, but I really should be doing this. Since this is wider, I know I'll have more than I need if I count this one four times. And I'm going to still add a little bit more, like about 10 inches more for overlap. And now all of that I didn't need to sew and cut some of this down. But now I have more binding for doing those pot holders to match. Okay. I'll go on the top here and get it ready. Let's see if I don't need the light on so you can see better. So, I mean, a lot of you may think to use your iron right away, but I find that that using the presser first will give me a, a sharper crease. So what, what we're trying to do here is we're going to be bringing the wrong sides together until they're together. And then on this side, you end up with what looks like piping, which really, the definition of piping is a misunderstood term. Piping is not full of anything. It's just a flat folded piece of fabric sewn into a seam. That is what the term piping is. And that's why inside of the instructions for the creative feed, if you have my book and video, 
the Creative Feet Techniques workbook and the Creative Feet Techniques DVD or video on USB or flash drive, which encompasses about 88 different techniques. You'll see that I list piping as corded piping. And so we actually fill fabric up and it becomes a three-dimensional or full type of piping. So what I'm gonna what I want to do is make sure that I have this pressed all the way up to the actual seam line, that it's real nice press there, so that this is the same width all the way down. And a lot of times with an iron, you think you have it folded or you think you have your seam allowance open really well, but what ends up happening is sometimes it's, it's like a little crease folded under there and you don't catch it. And then when you go to put these together, you'll have one area that's really small and then big and then small. Have you guys ever had that happen? You think your iron's doing you, doing good and then you find out you, you have to undo all that, you have to re-iron. Hi, Fiona. You can't stay. So what I'm also trying, on this case, we're gonna definitely have one seam folded over because we can use the satin edge foot to stitch in a ditch when we're done and get a perfect seam allowance. So I have to think, which, which way do I want this pressed? If I decide not to fill it with piping, which I was thinking about doing. Then we would want the satin edge foot to feel that edge right there. So this is the correct way. So we want to press towards the smaller fabric. And I'm going to turn on the iron and work as I go. So this is something that a lot of us do when we're at the iron. We put our fingers in and then bring the iron down and you can burn yourself with steam or with the iron itself. It's just a little bit at a diagonal, not coming straight across, but at an angle. And then it helps it lay nice and flat. Yes, yeah, so especially when you work with invisible thread, you need Glasses to see the invisible man with our <laughs> invisible thread. When my friend Terry and I are going to go somewhere, she doesn't say what time she'll be ready. She says, I have to put my shoes on, and that's supposed to tell me how long it's going to take her to get ready. Eight twenty-six a.m. You can stay as long as you want. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get the iron hot. And sometimes I feel like oh, I'll just go to the iron first, but I usually regret it. I have the chat on a different side of the screen and I can see it better. So this substitutes for finger pressing and uh, is much more friendly to your joints. So if you do finger pressing and you press down like that, 
you know how you can get sore in your joints so this will reduce the amount of damage that you do to your joints and it's ergonomic and it's you can use both sides frequently people ask which side do you use it for what and why are there two different angles on the presser and the reason there are two different angles on the presser is because sometimes you're closer to your work and sometimes you're farther away so when you're closer to your work I tend to use the short side when I'm closer and when I'm extending it out I automatically like flip it over and then the long end is on the bottom so you see how it's two different angles and they just are just lovely in your hand if those of you who have one can tell people what you think of your presser they work great for paper piecing as well foundation paper piecing last week it snowed I think I think it was last week in Colorado so we're, we're still having weather over my daughter lives in Colorado so now I'm just going to go on the top side and this works better if you're not on a pad so we want a really really good crisp seam and this is wood and it has resin impregnated in it so it makes it slick but not as slippery as plastic so even though I'm rubbing a lot on this it's not distorting the fabric which makes this an ideal thing to use on curved piecing like Drunkard's Path I can't wait till we're all no longer talking about COVID. I sewed one upside down, you guys. Does that make you guys feel better? <laughs> oh no. I got twisted is what happened. Did I do it right on this one? Oh, I got I got twisted oh no I'm gonna have to rip out seams oh. sometimes I do need a seam ripper I was fine here I lost my way this is why I glue if I glued that together I would have known before so that's good that's good No matter what, both of them would need to be ripped out. Darn it. I wasn't perfect again. This is wrong, wrong. Okay, so it's all wrong. <laughs> oh no. Don't do this. It's all in the flick of the of the wrist and little movements and I'm holding it nice and secure keeping it I'm not going at an angle I'm keeping it in line and going down and this is the 100 weight Invisifil oh my goodness So glue and then you don't have ripping out to do. <laughs> As I'm doing this, I'm going dum 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 dum. <laughs> yes, I'm not perfect. Absolutely not. Especially going live. Going live, your brain doesn't, I, my brain doesn't work as, as well as it would if I pre record. And that was all about me trying to keep the pretty fabric on top. <laughs> there we go.
For shame, for shame. Well, now you know. I should press it so I don't have to f fuss around with that quarter inch press. Iron's hot. Well, now you know how I rip out big pieces quickly. Because this is spray starch, I can steam it and it pulls that stretch that I created by ripping my seam out that way and it tightens that fabric back up again. Push steam through, but make sure your fingers aren't there. And as you're, as I'm pressing, I'm not like moving, I'm not rubbing the iron, I'm lifting it and making and moving it to the next spot. I'm real. <laughs> I'm gonna clip it so I don't have to think. And these are the clips I like. These are little clothespins. And I like these when I'm dealing with something like this because it's lightweight. And you can get these in stores in the area where they have photos for photo albums. So this is like a cute little clothesline to hang a picture on a string. And they come in different colors. I really want to carry these, so I'll let you know when, when we add them. Making sure that I don't twist it. <laughs> and this would be edited out and you guys would never know <laughs> if it were pre-recorded. The pre-recorded show is called Claire Rowley's Creative Notions. If you're looking in my YouTube channel under the playlists. So it's kind of like I'm live except for I edit. So you don't have to wait if I make a mistake. And I do sometimes make mistakes on the pre-recorded and I will show the mistake and then I show you how to fix it and mention it so that you know because nobody should think that their teachers are always perfect. It makes you not want to start something if you think the person who's teaching you never makes mistakes. There we go. Well, there goes ending early. <laughs> I keep hitting the mic. I hope it's not annoying you. It's here. I keep banging into it with my elbow or my shoulder. Partly why I want time off next week is so I can edit videos that I've already filmed that need to be edited. Pull off all those little threads because they'll just cause you frustration when you're sewing if you don't. I remember at one point going, that didn't feel right as I was sewing over one of the joins. But I didn't, I didn't stop to think. It's probably because I was talking too much. So we're pulling off all those little broken seam, seam stitches. People call them strings. I always think it's cute when they call them strings. Do you guys call them your thread, your thread strings or do you call them thread? Tails, I call them thread tails and, or just thread, but I don't call them string. When I think of string, I think of like a yo-yo has a string. So I'm just gonna like instant replay and sew that quarter inch seam allowance again. So, <laughs> take two. Uh, 
Okay, that's definitely correct. Annoying bits. Well, I just have to do all that work all over again, but I don't have to go as far because I cut off half of it. <laughs> Another thing I do is I go like this with my fingers and I feel the fabric hit the inside of my fingers as, as another guiding area ahead of where I'm sewing. Once you know you got right sides together, <laughs> you're good to go. And you hold your body in a stationary position. I looked at the needle for a minute, uh-oh. Because I moved the mic so I wouldn't hit it and it was in my way. A good way to learn is to make a mistake. You're less likely to forget not to do that next time. And remember, this is my first time doing the faux piping. I usually just do real corded piping. So this is me doing it for the first time. So I should. I shouldn't say that. I was going to say I should make mistakes, but I'm more likely to make a mistake the first time I try something. Keep your eye on the front of the guide. So if the fabric's touching here, then it is touching at the needle. If you look at the needle, you can stop paying attention and then the fabrics can drift away from the guide and then and then when you realize that it's too late you're already there and it's already not on the edge or not a quarter inch away and I'm triple checking my next join before I get there <laughs> to make sure that I do have right sides together that I didn't sew them wrong So if you don't find it this easy to sew your seam allowances together, you may not be spray starching your fabric for one, which definitely helps keep the fabric from drifting as you sew. And or you may not have our foot, the satin edge foot. So there are feet with guides that help you you look and you line up your fabric with relation to some part of a foot and what's different about our satin edge foot is that I'm relying on it to guide by pushing toward it so I'm not it's not a visual it's a push toward the foot and it goes I got gotcha. you see how sloppy my hands can be and then it keeps guiding me for that quarter inch so we can be sloppy so if your hands are not what they used to be, you're less likely to sew crooked. Didn't get all my thread tails. So do any of you rip your seams out like I did? I had to rip a seam. It's so rare that I have to do that. And, I, and I'm not trying to say it to show off. It just is. Because I usually glue first. And 
It eliminates that risk. Is that the first seam I had to rip apart since this year on my show? Better days? She keeps track of everything I do, I think. I think I broke three needles this year. And I didn't get all that thread off there. You can use one of those lint rollers to pull that off too quicker. Or our stick and tear stabilizer. Time to press again. <laughs> press to the small side. I just rolled the chair <laughs> over on it. I have ripped out other seams. <laughs> Larie's paying attention. <laughs> Hello, Larie. When did you sneak in? Oh, you just got in. Welcome. Don't do what I do, do what I say, right? There's been times when I wish I ripped out some stitches and did a better job. It's going to be sad when all this fabric's gone and I don't have this pretty fabric to use anymore. Or is it getting boring, you guys, for me to be using this so many times? All right, got to move this again. It's nice to have you. This is the second week in a row you've been with us, Larie. I'm glad to see you're back. Now we just need to get Sandy Young to come back. You should touch, touch base soon. Tell me about what you've been doing. And I was thinking about doing one of the coffee talks soon. And the coffee talks live episode is where you guys get to talk as well. And I'm on my computer instead of on my sewing machine. And you guys can ask all kinds of questions. And if there's like a video clip that I've filmed to answer a question and I bring up the video and I play it and so it's kind of like being live with me but I just chill with my cup of coffee it is by invitation only and you and you have to be in the school you have to get a password because we had one time we went live and uh, we made it public and there was a a young man that was inappropriate and before he could do, before he could get too bad, I was able to stop him, but I just don't ever want you guys to have to witness anything. It was scary. I was like, oh no. We are about to have a Labor Day sale, you guys. We will be having it on Labor Day. Uh, normally we would do it a little early, but my son is moving his house. So, and we're going to do a newsletter to announce that. If you aren't on our newsletter list at creativefeet.com. So you go to Creative Feet and sign, sign up on the newsletter. Uh, if you've ever gotten a newsletter, don't sign up because you're already signed up. We've had people sign up and then it kind of unsubscribes you for some reason. And of course, I always announce in the school anything that we do on the newsletter. 
Actually, today, Lurie, I'm not doing the 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 uh, traditional mitered. I'm doing a faux piping process, and we can use colored thread on this. We could use invisible as well. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I I have this I had this idea in my head, but I've never even done this, so. You know how my ideas that I haven't done before can turn out. So now we're going to bring wrong sides together and press. And I will do that over here. See, now it's like it never happened. We're by, right back where we were when I realized I did everything wrong. <laughs> so now we just bring these two edges together. And I always glue my binding together because it stops, it stops it from shifting. And when you iron, when you iron with the glue, it dries quicker. So just some dots, slide my finger, put it down. So that helps me really pre precisely place that. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Because this was my idea. Knocking things over. So I was thinking instead of faux piping, <laughs> We prepare it like we're going to do faux piping, but then we actually do bring in piping, so then we don't want that glued. So it's not faux. It's could be. If you don't have cording, it'll be a flat, and it's really not. It's, uh, it's not, it has any body in it if you don't put a cording in there. So what do you think? You guys can vote. To have the piping in there when we go to turn the mitered corner, there, there's going to be an issue. And that's why I didn't want to do it. So these two widths, this is one and three quarter inches and this is one and a half inch. So the piping fabric is bigger and then we're going to sew this and then when you wrap it around to the front of your quilt you only see that and you don't see the piping fabric on both sides you only see that stick out and that's the cool thing about it so so just letting you know that this is a way that you could do a a, te a technique and you could put cording in there but when we do a mitered corner it will not lay flat with this cord. It's too strong. So I'm going to do what everyone does and we're going to do a faux piping because but I'm going to play around with using this as a technique. See why you want to glue it? <laughs> that was going to be terrible. However, I did do a quilt where on the bottom of the, I did, I did strips and I did piping on the sides and then I did piping on the bottoms and it was really cool. I have that quilt hanging somewhere where I can't really grab it. Maybe I can grab it and let you guys see it in a minute. Slide it down. So I'm also going to end the video by quilting after the binding is attached. For those of you who came in a little bit later and didn't hear me say that, because I didn't finish quilting my quilt. Dot, 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 dot. Slide your finger.
starting to get thirsty. I'm going to have to take a second to drink some water. And I mute myself when I do that so you don't have to hear me swallow because this microphone is, picks up everything. I could just see this being utilized in so many different ways on different projects. This would make a, a very attractive cap sleeve on a blouse. It would just make it bigger. Wouldn't that be a nice finish on a cap sleeve? And then you could insert the, the piping, the cording in there to make it a piped or a corded piping. <laughs> Oopsie. You guys all ready to hydrate? I'm muting and hopefully I won't, f and I'm not going to forget to unmute. <laughs> so I'm going to drink some water really quick. Okay. So I think you're getting the idea how much easier it would be to sew this on with it glued together. It can't shift on you. If you've done a lot of binding, you know that you're, when you press your binding, just the pressing part can make it not line up properly. And some areas might be narrower than others because of the behavior of the iron and getting your fingers close to the iron. You know, you can burn yourself. So this eliminates you having to get your fingers really close to the iron as well. Makes it better for children if you're teaching children how to sew. No, no pinning. This would be a really cool tube as well. Be a cool handle on a purse to have it stick out on both sides. So if you were going to do a bag, it would look like that on that side and on this side. And you could actually intercord, add corning and make it a much stronger handle. My bottle's running out. It's always sad when that happens. And when I'm sliding my finger across, I'm making sure that I don't push the glue into the fabric. This helps stretch fabrics, not stretch when you sew them as well. It works for the serger also. Eliminating the need for the even feed to stop your fabrics from not feeding evenly. You missed my answer to something. One and a half and one and three quarters. For a total of one and a half or two and a half inches, just like you would normally have a two and a half inch piece folded in half and then you turn it into binding. It's so pretty. Okay, almost ready. So if you ever get so excited about sewing binding that you want to put your binding on first, which I know a lot of you are probably laughing, thinking I never get excited to sew binding on. I do. I really enjoy 
the uh, finalizing of the quilt. Now I'm going to flip this over and iron with this side up. I have time to, to adjust. You can see that the, uh, it's not, it wasn't lined up there. And I could have and would normally, if I weren't working in a limited space like this, glue and iron and glue and iron so it doesn't shift while I'm moving it along. Bye, Eve. Nice to have you with us. I hope you enjoy your meeting. Sometimes I like the way my cord is and sometimes I don't. And today I don't. And I like to sew my binding to the back and wrap it to the front. And that is the process for doing the faux piping binding technique that we're doing today. And it may not look like I'm lifting the iron, but I am. I'm lifting it up and moving it along. Lifting and pressing steam through. And the benefit of the satin edge foot is you see how consistent that seam allowance was. And because of that, the size of this is the same all the way along. So this is pretty much a... The first part was cutting out these pieces and doing the applique. And in this we used a, like a pearl cotton and this is done with the sequins and ribbon foot and a ribbon that we are going to be carrying. Hopefully they'll be arriving soon. I'm going to iron this. Part two was The quilting, right? So this will be part three. And I had lines drawn, so I'm not going to go take the iron all the way to the side. I think this is one of my favorite things I've ever done. So last week was the free motion quilting that you see on here. I think the week, the week before was apron that I inked, and then the week before that was the applique. So this is what it's going to look like on the edge. Isn't that nice? So basically, I need to square this off, and before... I ever put binding on I always stitch the binding through to all layers and here I didn't have it the same seam allowance so I'm gonna undo that stitch there we go I usually do an eighth of an inch stitch all the way around where I'm where the quilt is uh, after it's been cut so, and I do, I don't cut it 
first, I cut it after. So I go around when, with the back and the binding, or the back and the batting sticking out, and then I go around with it. And then you're going to sew on the wrong side. So the first thing you're going to do before sewing this is you're going to cut all the way around to a, an accurate measurement. Make sure it's square. Before sewing all the way around, definitely use the glue. And it will stop the fabric from shifting, which is what had happened last week when I did this. So this corner would not have had this corner would not have had any any puckering or shifting had I glued this before I sewed it. And this is the bamboo batting, so it has a lot of static cling. So once this is, is held in place, it's, it's really going to hold nicely. Little dots. Slide your finger across. And then lay it down. You can use a walking foot as well if you are a walking foot lover. So I'm going to use a, I'm going to just do eighth inch away from the edge because that's what I done prior up above. Keeping my eye focused here and now I'm kind of holding the quilt up, not hands down, but kind of lifting the fabric because it's thick so that it doesn't get stuck on the sewing machine table or anything else. And a released pressure is good. So this is the actual, that red line is the actual cut line. So where this is supposed to be cut. And time to square this off. And I had, I had already squared it before. I've always loved this ruler. It's, it's pretty old. It's got a chip on the corner. And let's see what it's called. Matrix rule. I'm not sure they're still sold. just turn this limited space so it's longer that way I really want to make sure I do this correct I've already ripped out one seam So I'm just basically lining it up with that raw edge of the fabric because I'd already squared this before I sewed that stitching line. I got rotary cutters everywhere. So looking down from above. And I take my finger and it goes off the edge of the ruler and that keeps it from 
slipping as I cut. So on the raw edge again. My pinky was off the edge again. And this one is the line that I drew, so I'm going to go eighth of an inch past. And my pinky's off the edge, preventing the ruler from slipping. Now I'm going to press it because it's not laying flat on the outside edges. <laughs> You're not ordering anything till the ribbon arrives? <laughs> Is that, I wish I could motivate the supplier. I ordered it. <laughs> been an interesting year. Sometimes I feel like these companies don't even care if they sell anything. Wet that. So I'm using water and steam because that fabric was all folded back. Here's an area that I don't like. And pressing is not enough. Spray starch. That spot. We'll shrink it up. Lifting and tapping. And now it's going to shrink that area back up. All the red lines are gone now. It's been a while since I bound anything at all, let alone faux binding. So at, at the end, we're going to have to join our binding ends together. So what I tend to do is think, where do I want my join to be if I don't join it perfectly? I want it to be away from the focal point. And there's so much to look at on this. I don't, I really don't think we have much to worry about. But we're going to flip it over and do the back first. And this is what we're going to be doing is bringing it around like this after it's stitched once and then it will come around like that and you'll have that appearance on the edge of the quilt. Isn't that beautiful? If you want a hint for squaring off, fold it in half, press. I just didn't want to mess this area up and then fold it in, in half the other way and press and that helps you find your center and then you can you can also press in in quadrants press four inches over and four inches over and uh, then lay it on top of a board and see that your crease lines line up with the lines 
But finding center is the, is the biggest challenge, and this is how I did it last week. I folded it once and twice. I pressed in the center, and that finding center, I then measured out, and I wanted it to not be square, so it's 18 by 20 inches. Anybody else have tricks for squaring? Another thing about squaring off is if your fabric's square to begin with, and you tear your 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 fabric, you'll be you'll know you're on the straight. So we're gonna need the end to be free. Squaring off a large quilt in a small space. Well, that'll be coming up soon. I was like, okay, so if I don't know what I want to teach this week, it should be me sewing my quilt. And otherwise, it's never going to get done. So if you guys don't mind me piecing a quilt one day while we're live, that will speed up me getting to the point of teaching you how to handle the big quilts for everything that you have to do with one. Now there's different types of clips and I'm going to explain why I use the Clip It Clips for binding. And you can see how much smaller the Magic Clips are than the Clip It Clips. And that big mouth right there allows me to glue my binding on without pushing the glue through the fabric because it's not touching at all where the glue is. It's touching past the glue. So this is far better for putting your binding on if you're going to use a gluing technique. And that is the only area that I'm going to glue. And now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and show you some tricks. I use washi tape, which is basically a really skinny quarter inch wide, like painters or artist tape. The other thing about these magic clips is they're a lot harder to open. So if your hands are, you know, starting to experienced pain then uh, using the clip it clips is much easier on your fingers Sorry about that, you guys. I I put things in places and sometimes the items don't want to go back where they belong. And I really was supposed to glue the other way. It's been a while. Pulled, I pulled that glue off, you guys. But the clip is something that I do so that I know where, where I'm going to be overlapping. Okay, it's going to come back and come around that way. So my brain isn't working as well because I'm doing something new and for the first time ever. So that helps me to know that's where I'm going to be overlapping. And this is the, the, the cool thing. So you take this washi tape and you lower your needle down into the machine in your left needle position because we're going to be using that quarter inch seam allowance. And you take the washi tape with the needle down 
and you go to the needle and then lay the tape down on the machine and I put my fingernail down where the feed dogs are and tear it. So what that is now is one quarter inch away from the needle. And you can do the same thing on the other side. Depending on which way your eye wants to, to follow. And then now cut it off. And another thing I do is I do one quarter inch away from the needle this way. All right, I can't see where I'm going here. I'm going I'm to be wasting tape if I go that far. <laughs> Come on, finger. There we go. Make sure you're sitting straight. And I'm looking around a mic, the microphone and the light. Come on, tear. There we go. Then to help my brain, let go of me. <laughs> Doesn't want to let go. I kind of give it a color, like point. That's the quarter inch. And this edge is the quarter inch. So you know which side of the tape to pay attention to. And this is even though the satin edge foot is setting set up for a quarter inch seam allowance. Which I do precisely using a measuring tape to position my needle one quarter inch away from the edge. It has nothing to do with the fabric at this point, it has to do with this measuring tape. Lower your needle so it hovers over one of the lines on the measuring tape. Lower the foot, move the wire inside the foot to the quarter inch mark. And now you have an accurate quarter inch distance between the guide on the foot, which helps you guide straight, and the needle. As long as you don't change your needle position, then you're good to go. I'm trying to think how long it's been since I did binding. So I'm leaving about five inches unsewn. I could go even farther back. I really should go further back. That doesn't count as ripping out a seam, does it? Yeah, I pretty much I covered this on my binding video that I already have on my YouTube channel showing you how to do just regular binding with a mitered corner. Once again, pushing toward the foot so that the foot is steering. And the reason I don't glue this is you're going to find out here in a second. So as we're coming up here, we need to stop one quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt. And that's what the washi tape does for you. So see, I overshot it. 
So now it's, it's not on the edge, it's one stitch off. So I go lift and move it back until the quilt is right on the edge of that washi tape and then lower the needle, lift the foot and turn. And now the edge of the satin edge guide lined up with the washi tape here. Make sure that you're going right to the point and that's where I shorten the stitch length to 1.8, come down to the point and then go back up and lower the needle, lift the foot and we're gonna spin around and I use my presser to do this. To hold that down, needle up. What do I do? <laughs> it's been too long. Brain, the brain isn't working. Spin it around. I know some of some of you are, are yelling at me right now, aren't you? Spin it around. I go back, back off, go down, lift, and what you're looking for is you want the folded edge to end up right along, oh sorry my fingers are in the way. You want to have this folded edge be lined up with that edge there. <laughs> Come on, Claire. Should have watched my own video before I started. It's this faux piping thing that's got me a little bit messed up. back again. And this is why I recommend when you're learning binding that you make a bunch of little quilts too and sew like seven in a row. So you don't have to, it's easier for you to remember what to do by the time you've done like seven. Keep pushing toward the foot. And I really could have lengthened my stitch length. Okay, watching here again. leaning against the binding as well. I remember just going like this in this point. I think I'm remembering the last part of my process. could see better around all this equipment. Well, this is the first time I've done this, so <laughs> it 
Now you know. I haven't done it all. I really like doing something for the first time with you guys watching too. It's challenging. And you could hear me problem solve and get a little confused now and then. And it ends up two and a half inches wide, yes, Fiona, but it's one, the, the piping color is one and three quarters inch. And when you cut it, and then the the color that you're going to see the most of is cut smaller or narrower at one and a half. So then you have that seam allowance that joins them together, which removes a half inch of that math because we have to sew them together to make them appear as if they're one. Let's see how I'm approaching and I'm peeking to see if I'm lined up with that washi tape. We've got one more stitch to go. Needle down, spin it around, place it down, back up. Kneel down, lift the foot. When you see how cool this is, this is the most time consuming part. The rest is gonna go so fast, you're gonna be shocked. I'm glad that my suffering leads to you learning more, Fiona. <laughs> I definitely have had some challenging projects that I came up with. And I am aware of the projects that I said I would make patterns for. It's just having time to make those patterns while we're developing the new website. Coming up on the miter. Which should be interesting. Remember, haven't done it before, so. I probably will have a little bit of struggling to think it through. Look for the washi. the foot down. And my design wall is like leaning up in the hallway outside of my studio, waiting for me to get on a ladder and install it in the ceiling. This is the last part and I'm I got plenty. Try to make sure everything lays flat. And I have this little clip to remind me that this is the joining area.
and it gets kind of messy. You need a certain amount of flap to handle it and be able to f manipulate everything. And this is, okay. And I came up with a number which is nine inches. That seemed to be the safe number for making sure you have nine inches of loose on both sides divided in half. So like four and a half and four and a half, just for the beginning. Go back. Now we're going to be pressing and bringing this over. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? I really do like it. So it's going to be interesting when I get to the corner. Oh, I remember now what I do. Okay. I came up with a method of mitering your corner completely by a sewing machine. And you do so at this point, you're going to create your, your miter for the front now. And this is why I couldn't fill it with real cording because when you turn a corner, it's, uh, we're going to have to, you'll see as I turn it around why having a thick cording in there wouldn't work. And, uh, so the trick is always to get the miter to look good on the top because we've sewn it to the bottom and we're flipping it to the front. And a lot of times you're taught to like push fabric in and get a hand needle and hand sew and we are eliminating all of that with this next step. So kind of fold your quilt on the corner and we're bringing this edge to that edge. It's been a while since I did this, you guys. And you want to have this edge really in line because now you're and now you're going to press this nice and crisp. And it's definitely not something that an iron is beneficial for because we're in a really tight spot. And now the trick is to sew one quarter inch away from this point. Let me draw it for you. The goal is to sew across. Where are my itty bitty rulers? I have some really small ones. I think I know where my little one is. Let me know if I'm talking too soft ever or you can't hear me well. Oh, I got this. I'm gonna use these. This is our add an eighth need ruler. It's nice and small. So what we're trying to do here is we want, because you're using a quarter inch seam allowance and it is important that this be a quarter inch seam allowance because otherwise this won't, this won't work. So we're one quarter inch in Okay, so there's a quarter inch in to that line. Then we go a quarter inch up. Oh, my head's in the way. Sorry, you guys. 
I'm trying to see around the microphone and I made it so you can see. So one quarter inch in from the point and then one quarter inch up and one quarter inch up. And then you would draw another quarter inch up from that point. <laughs> and you draw across one quarter inch. So basically this is what we're trying to do. However, I don't need to draw this because the satin edge foot is set for a quarter inch distance away from that point. So simply by placing the guide and have the point hit the guide, you're gonna be a quarter inch away from that point. Uh, so I've got so many things in front of me. I need my magnifying glasses. I have no idea how this happens to me. Every week, I have my glasses on and then I take them off and it's like they just go poof. <laughs> I found them. Yeah, this is just a little bit different than the other video. This process is the same. I believe it will work. We'll see, because I've never done this before. Oh. So I really want this secure, because we're gonna do something with this. Go all the way off. Go back on again. Back up. Sorry, my shoulder was in, your, in the way. <gasps> Oops, I cut that. <laughs> Magnifying glasses don't always work for me. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip. So I'm going to mute my mic for a second. Okay, I'm back. I'm looking for my little tool that I have no idea where I got that I want to buy so you guys can have one as well. And it's usually in my little glasses holder. You see me use it quite a bit. It's red handle. Come on, where are you? Show yourself. Well, I'm going to use a screwdriver instead and see if it will work. One more little look in my cubbies. I don't know what I did. So then this is like a little pocket that we've created and we're going to do this on all four sides. But what you do is you wrap this around and you tuck in your corner. And now you have a mitered corner sewn 100% by a machine. Is that in focus? 
And look at how nice that worked on the piping. Isn't that awesome, you guys? Woot, woot. Come on, give me some excitement. So I got to do that on all four sides. So the steps are that you fold your quilt in. And then you use the presser and you make it, make sure that it's lined up here and then you f get a really good crease. This is key. And now you'll see me do this without having to draw any of the lines because the satin edge foot is one quarter inch away from the point as long as you line up the point with that guide. Hold on to your thread. And back and forward and back. And go back on, always ending on. And I use the scissor. And we will pull it over. Double check. And this little pocket that you sewed, that little pocket there, you put something in it like that. And that's how you get it to be a perfect point on the corners. And that's where I was looking for my little red tool that I have. It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of washi tape and the satin edge foot. This is why people would wait in line at shows to watch me sew binding. And I get people all day long coming up and going, my girlfriend said I have to come sit down and watch you sew binding. So no special expensive equipment, no confusing apparatuses. You know the science behind a perfect mitered corner now, now you can do it at any time. It must be the same distance that your seam allowance is. So if you decide to use a bigger binding, you can use this technique. You just have to make sure you sew in as the width of your seam allowance. That's the key. Hey, my scissor thing worked again. I think we've determined that it was just that my machine was so dirty that it the scissors wasn't working. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, you guys are great. So once again, fold your quilt in half and see how it just kind of comes out all on its own. Because here I am. Hold on to that needle thread. And I would, and people would go, well, when do you do the miter? And I go, first. <laughs> like, what do you mean you do your miter corner first? How can you sew your miter corner first? And this is how. Okay, now to bring our corners out. Stick your little screwdriver or any kind of turning tool in that little pocket that you created. So right inside that little quarter inch seam allowance. And it gives you that perfect point that everybody wants. And then once your binding is all glued in place, because I would, I definitely do that. It only takes about an hour to go all the way around a king size quilt, sewing it. Isn't that pretty? I really do like the faux piping look. Ah, 
This mic is hitting me in the shoulder again. My camera is far away from me, so I'm having to lean. So if I accidentally didn't show you before, sorry about that. Oh, I wish I had that other tool. trying to do it so you can see it and I'm failing <laughs> so I usually face it so I can see where my little pocket is and I usually don't do the turning of the miters out yet I usually join the piping first so I'm going to undo these corners again and now prepare for this and this is where a lot of people get nervous how do I cut this come on brain kick in So the width of your binding is how much of an overlap you need when, when it's all said and done. And then it's safe to just cut that, cut that off when it is, the overlap is the right amount. May not seem like it and you may be nervous to cut it, but mathematically that's how it works out. So if you use a wider binding, you would use a, you would make sure they overlap whatever, however wide that is. That's how much you need these two to overlap. But you also don't want them sewn. So you see how it's not sewn? So you just kind of bring them together. And we'll want to snip it. And I know that it's safe to cut the majority of that off. And I'm leaving myself extra. It's so pretty. What could I do with that? Nice in nice cap on a sleeve too. Okay, so if you take your ruler and you measure so that's one and a quarter. So that means, I'll cut a little more here. So you overlap it, you go like this. Make sure you cut that straight. It's a little not straight. So you can go like this. one and a quarter like that and then draw on your quilt okay so now you know when it's overlapped that this is the spot that's where you want to cut it and it's safe to cut it right now and i'm scared because it's been a while to even do that but I know I'm right, so I'm cutting. And if I'm not right, well, <laughs> you'll all have something to laugh about. Now we want to open this up. And open this up. And now we're going to fold that quilt in on itself and clip it. And 
and then just as we did before when we mitered we make an L correct did I give myself enough I need to pull it off a little more So this is right side down here, right? This is right side here. Still got to open that up a little more. And that's just the glue, remember? Hi, Jackie. I wish I understood what you're writing. There we go. Come on. Come on, brain. Kick in. Let's get that unclipped for a minute. A little more. I think what it is is nine inches not sewn, too. Maybe a little more. And if we were to sew that, yeah, so that is the correct way. Pretty sure that was right. It looked right. We got the L. And we're going to sew from that corner to that corner. Get the glue. And this time I'm doing several dots. Slide my finger across. Make sure that's perfectly straight. Always working with that L. Think of it as an L, right sides together, L. And if you always sew from the same side, you'd be less likely to make an error. So before we always started up here and worked our way down. The most challenging part is keeping the quilt out of your way. If you fold it and clip it closed, then now you have more flexibility to manipulate this. And we want to make sure that this is flush with that edge as well. And then you should wait for it to dry or use your iron to speed up the drying process. Now we want to draw that line again because why not make it easier on yourself? <laughs> to just wait for it to dry. Give yourself a little more than I gave. Mm -hmm. 
You thought you overlapped the entire width of the binding? We're, we gotta make it like one and we need to miter it so that you can't tell where the join is. Just fucking lay it down. Because we've determined that it doesn't matter which way you sew, either on the top or the bottom, as long as the line is the same direction we did for the rest. Just trying to get the ruler in there. Definitely need more room. A little bit more room. So it's a little different, it's a little more challenging than traditional binding with this, this seam allowance. And I'll measure this distance so that you know. And I probably, it's probably nine inches because that's what I had said, but I didn't leave myself nine inches. Where's my pin? There's the point. And we want to get to that corner up there. And we already did a double check to see that that will be the correct way before ever sewing. I should wait for it to dry, but I, I think I can finagle it. Do you think I can do it without waiting for it to dry? Quarter inch seam allowance still. Here we go. Make sure there's no clutter. <laughs> Don't be like me. Make sure you're all neat and tidy all the time. Move those clips so I can feed it. Center needle position. Bye Marlene. Lower your needle into the stitching line. Lower the foot, move the wire over to the needle so you don't have to watch the needle as you sew. make sure everything's flat nice and you don't have to go fast remember slow slow and easy wins the race I'm trying to keep my shoulder out of the shot and so if you just eyeball this and you swerve a little bit this is where you see the most and you can't hide a not straight seam. It will show up. So this is a very important thing to sew straight and why I go through the trouble of drawing a line. Keep that guide right on the line. Now I'm going to get rid of this clip. which I would have waited for it to dry, remove both clips, and it would have been easier to spread it out and make sure it's all flat. Go all the way down. So in.
Okay, so now we gotta flatten it out and sew it. <laughs> Did I do it wrong? You can s Well, it's definitely different than the other binding. And one of you said that straight across for this. So you've done it before? Because I, I don't normally have too much. Or I don't, it usually lays perfectly flat. That's all right. You get to see me make mistakes live. Now I got to use a seam ripper. I really need to replace the blade on this one. I feel like that should have worked. <laughs> it really is puzzling to me. First time. I should have watched a tutorial. <laughs> Watch someone do it. Bizarre. Oh, well, I guess this this time I'm going to just go straight across. But that doesn't feel right. I don't think I left myself enough to. <laughs> oh, well. Darn it, not perfect. You can't see what happened. It was too... The overlap should have been right. I think I cut the overlap too short. I based it, oh, I based the overlap on this. So this is my error. I based the overlap on this instead of on this distance. So that's the distance that I needed for overlap before I cut it. So I cut it too short. So now I have to just sew a straight seam. Oh well. Bummer. It's usually perfect and it's so fun to go. Ta da! I messed up. How dare I? So, to do this straight, watch my tutorial. <laughs> on binding and doing a miter corner and you will see how to do it right. But that's basically it. So the overlap is way too short. I feel like adding a piece just so I can teach you right. Had I not cut it already, which is a good rule of thumb, so when you are coming up to this point, you want to make your fabric overlap this big. I did half the size because I governed it, I, my mind was only seeing this. And that's just because I've never done this before, where I would normally see it as this. And then you make sure that the two ends overlap that much so that you can sew from there to there and it erases any gap in, in the fabric. 
Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, no one's going to notice. Only the other people that watch my video later and goes, she messed up. See, she messed up. So now I'm going to see how much these overlap. Which I already did before, which is wrong. Which <laughs> is, oh well. I made a mistake. Inch and a quarter. So three quarters of an inch, inch and a quarter divided by two, three quarters of an inch, inch, inch and a quarter. No, it's not. Live, live sewing. I want to sew this with seams pressed open. Both sides. My fingers are not dry. That's the glue all over my fingers. And oh, you're not seeing it. Oh, sorry. So now I'm pressing these seams open and they are overlapped. A half inch and a half inch equals an inch. I pressed it, did I uncrease my press? get quiet when I make mistakes. So it's five sixteenths. Why am I quiet? It's so unlike me. I didn't secure it because I'm going to test it. I make sure that it is flush with the quilt. And now you use spray starch to tighten that up. So if it were, if I had done that right, it would have been perfect. Oh, well. It's all because I'm doing a different kind of binding and my brain is a little bit annoyed. Like, what are we doing? How do we do this? But you can see I have that lined up very nicely and I'm pressing it open. And I see how baggy it is, and it would be baggy even if it were mitered. So you spray a good amount of spray starch on there. And it's... Uh, the iron's not hot yet. Let's see if you guys... Yeah, so... It's the width of the binding flat 
and that's how much of an overlap you need in order to go from one corner to the other so I could add a piece but I'm getting a little bit of a headache <laughs> And I'm going to quilt a little before I end, and it's 5.14, and we don't go past 6 anymore. So now I shoot steam through, and I'm going to dry all that spray starch. And it, it shrinks up any stretching that you did of your binding. What am I hearing? There's a weird sound. So see how nice and flush that is now? It's the same same diameter or same length. And before it was too short, this was too short. Something's weird, you guys. I'm hearing a weird noise. You guys hearing that little d -d 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 sound? Very strange. Bye, Fiona. Oh. I don't know what is going on. I'm going to take a moment to uh, step out. And I'll be right back. I'm going to try to get that noise to stop. Come on. It's like my mouse is not working right. No, you're not allowed to give me trouble. Very strange. Oh well, I can't get it to say, oh I, yeah, I don't know why, it, my mouse is acting weird. So weird. Why is this doing this? Okay, I can't do something that I normally do. We'll see how this goes. I may have to end early. Oh my God. I'm gonna mute for a second.
I figured it out. My, I usually, I usually turn my keyboard off and I did not turn it off. And so I put the ruler down in front of it and the ruler was pushing on the keyboard. <laughs> I was starting to think we had a ghost in the room. It was doing like uh, Morse code. <laughs> So I'm going to turn this off and we should be okay now. I'm going to check something, see if that's all it was. That's all it was. See, that's what it should have said when I was on my break. But the mouse is still acting weird. Stuff's still weird. Okay, the next step is to do what I was doing before and that is to push these little corners out. And you push your turning tool into that little pocket that you sewed on the corners. Perfect mitered corners, all sewn by machine. It's so nice too, because it's consistent. Perfect, beautiful mitered corners. Okay, so I got all four turned. You only get one chance to make that nice and pointy because once you glue this in place or pen it whichever way method you choose then that point you can't get in there to push it out so make sure you do that first that was so, so funny <laughs> Uh, I just wait. I long for the live feed that nothing goes wrong. Pressing, pushing steam through. So we get nice, crisp. And you want that, that lip to go past your stitching line that you use to sew the binding or to secure all the layers. Doesn't that look amazing? I just think it's one of the coolest things. I'm not sure who started it. Oh, I have to first sew this. Forgot to sew that, but you can see how there's no, there's no pucker. And it would have been perfect had I done that overlap properly. <laughs> I'm going to go past where I had already stitched so that that should secure that really well. Quarter inch seam allowance. my sons all don't worry about making mistakes they like it when you make mistakes it makes you more real to them <laughs> all right here we go back to where i had started to be flat.
and then you come up and that's the join so it's not that noticeable but it's not perfect so I take the iron into that point like that and then shoot steam in oh I can't I gotta figure out which button to push it's upside down Make sure the quilt's flat. I'm not going to finish quilting the whole thing today, you guys, but I'm just going to do a little bit, show you guys how to do it, and then I'll end. And if you want to watch more on how to quilt, last week was... So episode 20 is how I quilted all these flowers. And most of those pebbles. I don't know if you guys hear me hit that microphone with my shoulder. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to go all the way around and use spray starch to kind of shrink in the binding and then go all the way around with glue normally, but I'm trying to end before six. So I'm probably not gonna glue. And you'll see why. So it's a more forgiving method. The sewing part is quicker than traditional binding. So spraying on that binding you don't need a lot this time because it's already had spray starch on it and then it wants to stay because that's what spray starch does it tames the fabric and sets it down shrinks it back up once again So can you imagine me doing a king size quilt on the set? I can barely handle this little square. We'll see how it goes when I do that quilting. It won't be live, that's all. It'll have to be pre-recorded. All right, shrink it up. Woo, arm was too close. So this is what I was wondering, if I could put cording in now at this point. And use the pearls on piping foot and a double needle well if I did a double needle it would look bad on the back so I'll play around with it though and see if I can't come up with a way to do a piped binding that's square we'll see once I put my mind to something I really like this lip. So like if I put something on this, I mean, this would be a really cool way of binding like a game board. If you wanna do checkers or chess and you know, the pieces wouldn't fall off because the, the lip of that piping or faux piping 
would stop it from falling off. So I should glue it, but I'm not. I'm going to use a satin edge foot for this. And I'm going to clip it, though. And the goal is to get the piping to go past that stitching line That's that you use to get the, the three layers to behave. And even on my other technique, I put clips on the corners to just keep them in, in, in place. So definitely be better if, if I glued it. Now if you're doing a big king size quilt or something, you, you wouldn't be able to take the whole quilt and shove it in the machine over here. So we're gonna use the other side of the satin edge foot guide. It has two sides to it. So if you move the guide over to this side, and we put our needle in the center needle position, or even all the way in the right needle position, so you can see I can move the guide further. Bring the needle down in that ditch. I'm having one of those moments where I can't think straight. And that was a foot that was that was returned because they uh, drove over it with their car, and I can't believe I sewed all that time with it. Okay, let me get close again. Bring the needle down into the ditch and then bring the guide over there we go so now you could tie a knot or you could bring the thread into the quilt and i'm just going to tie a knot because we're running late this light is in my way And that's why I wear the magnifying glasses because I sit further away than I than I should. But they make it so I can. So now my focus is on the guide on the inside of the guide, not the outside of the guide, but the underneath. And I want to keep the white part of the guide off that edge. And then my needle is now stitching off the off of this and onto that. I could go a little bit more. That's better. There we go. Now we're right in the ditch. So notice my fingers on, on this side now. They're on this side. Relying on the foot. Where's that little screwdriver? There it is. I pressed that weird. I messed up my miter with the iron. Come up to the corner and lower your needle. Remember, this is my first time doing faux piping. I've used this kind of thing in a garment before. I just never had done it on a quilt yet.
Nothing is glued. Just pressed. Whoopsie. I watched the needle. Don't look at the needle. <laughs> Light touch. Notice this hand's not moving. It's pushing. Light touch, not hard. Because if you push hard, you can stretch your fabric out. Come down to the point. And lower the needle into the corner. Isn't that nice, you guys? And then on the back, you have a stitch along the edge of your binding. But it's the back. And you could use invisible thread as well and not see, you would still see like the, the needle strikes. But this is the Invisifil thread, so it's almost invisible. But it is softer than the nylon invisible. Coming up on the join that's not done right. Can you see that? It's gonna sound harder or the needle's gonna have trouble, more trouble going over that because that's why we do the diagonal joins. But it doesn't look bad even though I had to do that straight join right there, right? I mean, anyone who can see that would have to be a sewer that wants to find my join. <laughs> I don't think I know anyone like that, so I don't have nothing to worry about. I had an old friend of mine find me on LinkedIn and he asked if I would, if I could tailor him a fitted suit. <laughs> and I giggled. I went, LOL. I could, but I teach people how to sew. <laughs> and I make products for sewing machines. I used to make tuxedos for bears. It was called Debonair Bear, and I tried to find that pattern, but it doesn't ex doesn't seem to exist. And if any of you know of a source for the Debonair Bear pattern, I would love to teach that because it's like a small tuxedo, and there's lots of different techniques that you can use our feet for in tailoring. Zoom, zoom. And there we go. Definitely glue, you will appreciate your binding much more. I may even unstitch this and stitch it again later. setting myself that six o'clock time limit. This is the last side. It's not straight because I didn't iron well. That's why gluing first is better. Also feels like it's getting really hot in here. I'll bet those of you who are in snowy areas would like to be warm right now. <laughs> Supposed to get to, I think, 86 degrees to get today. But now it's evening hours. It should be starting to cool down. That's it. All the way around. Tie knot. Mm. 
I'm going to take my foot off while you admire that from the top. So this is the area where I have yet to quilt and I'm going to quilt some of it so that you can see. I mean, theoretically, you're always taught to bind after you quilt, but you can bind first. No, it's all perfectly positioned and then you can quilt with our Octi hoops. And the reason we're, we're able to do that is because I'm not going to use a foot on the machine. So there's no, there will not be any pushing against the fibers to cause puckers. And uh, a lot of times you're taught to work from the middle and work your way out to push puckers out so that you can cut off. And, and also because quilts start out square, but as you quilt, you guys handle it too much and it's like kneading dough you end up spreading out your surface of your quilt but with the octi hoops there is no stretching of the quilt to cause that to happen so if it's square you can bind and then you can quilt because you don't change the shape of the actual quilt when you use our octi hoops do any of you have any questions as i get the octi hoops ready you guys haven't said anything in a while. Are you there? So I'm unscrewing the screw that holds my Snap-on adapter on. Putting it in a safe place. So no foot. And this is a bobbin that I wound. at the beginning of this entire project and that's all I have left. So I'll quilt till it's gone. How's that? We'll see how long that goes. I may quilt a little bit longer. We'll see if any of you are still there. Looking for my Octi hoops. So the octi hoops come three to a set. I had somebody ask recently, uh, or think that you, when you buy the octi hoops, you buy one hoop at a time, but you don't. You get all three at the same time. And they are the same shape, but not the same size and they don't really connect with one another but they have the same angle so if you bring the corners together you can actually move them around as one item and that's what we do when we quilt we're going to use two one will be on the bottom of the quilt and the other one will be on top and the one that you choose to be on top is based on the size of your your of your hand so if i were to use this one my hand is too small and if I quilt with these and know that you do use a handle that's like a writing instrument so you're actually going to be drawing like this with your fingers so your fingers are not this long then you you can't move the quilt with just your fingers and you'll tend to lift your arm up and then your quality drops so with the smaller frame on top for me, because that's a good size for my hand, drop the handle into that frame, bring the corner together with my non-dominant hand. If you're left-handed, you'll hold it this way, which my, I'm not, and I struggle just to think it through. Hand down and you would draw like that. So right-handed people, rest your hand on the bottom frame and you draw like this holding the frames together with your non-dominant hand. So this is the hand that needs the training. Keep the frames together, move it around. Bring the frames together, move it around. Train this hand that that's its job. Do that till you don't have to think about it. And then we're gonna take this frame and it goes below and that goes on top. 
and then you just bring the corners together and you draw. Of course, it won't move on here because this is my ironing surface. But on the sewing machine, it's super slippery because of the bottom of the frame is engineered with a surface that makes it slip and slide on your sewing machine surface without scratching your sewing machine surface. And it's like magic. So you choose where you want to quilt. Take that frame, the larger of the two, place it beneath the quilt. And I'm just going to start here because that's where I left off. Top frame goes in. And you just bring those two frames together. And then you're able to draw with your dominant hand and it rests on the frame. And my arm is on the bed of the sewing machine, not on the quilt. If your arm is on the quilt, the quilt will not move because you'll be preventing it from moving. So saying that can be a little confusing because then I say, now put your hand on the quilt, your hand on the quilt, your arm on the machine, hand on the quilt, arm on the machine, hand on the frame beneath it. So you become stuck to the frame and the frame or the quilt becomes stuck in the frames and nothing is stretched out of shape. So your quilt will not change shape as you quilt despite already having your binding on. I have the Super Universal Needle by Schmetz. This is my favorite needle for quilting. It also, it, it just doesn't lift up the fabric as much. It's a wonderful needle. Now I lower the foot causes tension to build on the thread. See how the needle is deflecting? So if you do not have the foot down, there's no tension on the thread and then you get bird's nests on the back. See how easily that moves? So as soon as I lower the foot that's not there, it then holds on tight to the thread. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Bring your bobbin thread up. And I can't see that it's there. I don't think I got it. And I like to go around twice on my pebbles. I'm gonna cut that thread. No one has commented in a while. Are you guys there? Somebody say something. When I do a pebble, I balance the pebble on two pebbles. So where two pebbles come together, that's where you place another one. And then you do them in varying sizes. I go around twice so no one can tell where my beginning and ends are. Double circle. I feel like the chat broke. Go around, and around, and around, and around, and say circle, say circle, circle, and it'll help your brain do a circle instead of a weird shape circle and notice my fingers this hand here move the microphone sorry this is the hand that's doing this the circle movement and around and around and around And I absolutely love doing this and could keep going for hours, but I'm going to just do this little area here and show you that there's no puckers, despite the fact that the quilt's already bound. 
circles and circle. I say circle out loud so that my brain knows what to do. Because your brain may not know what a pebble is, but if you say circle, then it knows, it knows that a circle is round. Circle, and there you go. And now I'm gonna cut the thread and show you in, in the video, because I don't see any of you talking, which either means the chat broke. Hi, Susan. Oh, it's stuck. It's stuck on my other thing. Oh, you guys are there. I stopped. It stopped feeding in my program. Do you guys feel like I did enough quilting then? Do you feel satisfied seeing me quilt that much? And uh, I can show you the bottom to, to show you that it is, it is not puckered on the backside either. Even though the batting or the binding was on there. So this is where I quilted right here. So now I'm going to flip it over and show you how there's absolutely no puckers anywhere on the back of this. All that quilting and not a, nothing was holding this together, by the way. Just the static cling of the bamboo batting that we offer. And this was also done with the hoop. And see how precise I was able to be around the Dresden plate. And that is because you can see when you don't have a foot in your way. So I stitched all the way around. And these were traced designs that I, that I did. Your internet went out for a while. So on my cell phone, the chat is feeding. Hi, Judy. I make it look easy. You know, in the beginning, it was not easy for me either. And uh, the challenges that you're faced with when using the OctiHoops is that you're used to writing with pens that require you to squeeze them. And you're also pushing down and so once, in, until you get to where you realize that this is more like a Sharpie marker, that you don't have to push down against it, once you get a lighter, softer touch with everything that I, that I offer you, all of the feet, also a light touch will give you a better result. But your history working with other products has always forced you to push down and grab hold and pull through and... So you have to train yourself to be softer and gentler and to rest your body. Another thing you're not used to doing, if you do free motion quilting, generally you're done, is done this way and your elbows are up and you move like that. But with the Octi Hoops, you're not, you're resting your entire body so that you don't have that cramping that can occur between the shoulder blades. Okay. Um, we've had internet outages a lot this week and I have no idea why the chat just completely shut down on my screen that I used to do the live, but it's been one of those weeks. Maybe it has to do with the moon, the flower moon, a flower quilt for the flower moon. Do any of you have any questions before I bid you adieu for this Thursday? And I will be finishing this and you know where it's going on my kitchen table for the summer. I absolutely love it. I hope that you've enjoyed the transition that this has taken place over three episodes of Fabrically Speaking Live this week, last week, and the week, two weeks prior to that, because I did inking on a apron two weeks ago and I will be releasing this video very soon as a pre-recorded video showing you how to create this zipper pouch using a fabric panel to create your fabric and this is a fun lesson and also the inking of my koi fish and that one is 12 hours of 
of uh, footage that needs to be edited. So these will be releasing soon. They won't be live videos. They'll be pre-recorded. Any questions? You guys have a happy Memorial Day week. I will not be live next Thursday unless I change my mind. I am trying to force myself to take a little bit of a vacation, staycation, just a little bit of a rest since it's a holiday. And, uh, but I changed my mind a lot. <laughs> we'll see. But you can expect some pre-recorded videos at very least next week. I could go, I could release a video and actually do it as a premiere and then I'm on with you in the chat while we watch the video. That, that could be done. We'll see. Meanwhile, I will, um, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and the like button will appear after the live is over. You can uh, then hit the thumbs up and that really helps us to get better representation from YouTube. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll subscribe today. And if you don't know, I have a free online school. It is in the chat right now. If you go all the way to the top of the chat, you'll find the link. And it's probably the last thing I did here. No, it's not pasted. Oh, the, the chat just started going again. Hi, Judy from Oklahoma. You're welcome. I need lipstick. Let's see if I can. I know what I'll do. I'll share and show you the school really quick and get the link that way. So this is the school. This is the VIP group. So I'm going to copy this link. And stick it in the chat. Patterns for different things. These flowers are inside of here. So if you go to, when you arrive into the school, you're not in the VIP group, you're in the school. This is the school. And then there's the creator groups. You go to creator groups and then you go to the Fabrically Speaking live show. And you can see the quilt binding video for today is in here. If it can wake up, there we go. Now, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see topics and in whoopsie that moved while I was <laughs> click on topics. And in topics, you'll see patterns and documents. So every one of my live shows, if there's a pattern and I finished it, it's in here. So the flowers that I quilted for this one is inside of here. See, rounded Dresden designs. So these are, is a PDF file. You click on it and it downloads to your computer so that you can then print it on your printer and you can quilt along with me and create these designs. This might be too much for my computer. And isn't that cool? If you, that's, it's in a lower light so you can really see the puffiness of the quilt. This is the bamboo batting, by the way. So you can share images as well. And down here, you'll see, out, out, out of here, go to the next one. Out of the topics, Claire. Okay, so scrolling down, you'll see each one of my shows. And this is where people post pictures of their work. So if you want to share something that you're doing, this is where you do it. And uh, other people, everybody in here is a friend of yours that likes to sew. This is the picture of the apron that I inked 
and I put a kitty on top of a fence and now there's a hummingbird and there will be a butterfly. The Creative Feet site. is creative feet like the feet you put your shoes on except for their sewing machine feet and everything is broken down by products creative feet are in here if you're interested in my book and video you would go into the books and videos if you haven't bought our feet yet and you want to buy them all because each foot does over 20 things and they fit all sewing machines we have specials as well the basic special is just the feet and you get the little booklets that are included in each one of these packages and this is the educational special this is the one that takes you through and you can get it in a binder or you can get the book on a flash drive and print it out yourself. It's, it's up to you. The flash drive is right here. And, and then we have testimonials located throughout our site and reviews so you can see other people's opinion of our products. And then we also have all of our threads and needles and everything that you need and everything that you've seen me use. Why aren't you going? <laughs> oh my goodness. Lots of wacky electronic issues this week. And my mouse is doing something weird on my computer so I feel like I need to in before I have trouble all right so I'll see you soon maybe next Thursday maybe not and uh, be sure to join and subscribe to our our um, YouTube channel and also to our newsletter was we're about to do a newsletter and it will have a lot of information and another blog that is available at creativefeet.com. My last blog was on thread. So thank you for joining me, everybody. I appreciate your hanging out with me every week and can't wait for my computer to act normal again. <laughs> so with that, I love you all and I will see you next time. Bye. Mwah.